Welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at something that a lot of folks have been curious about in the night vision group. This is straight out of China, but with a little twist. We've already looked at the Somo gears. Now we're going to introduce you to laser speed. Hi, right? That was good. I could tell when you sent it. Yeah, yeah. Same. I felt good on that one. Hey, you! That's great for night vision. Laser Speed just released their latest addition to the lineup, which is called the LSM6, or if you already know it's from Laser Speed, we just call it the M6. So the M6 is a full power solution for those who are interested in getting that straight laser beam or that bright illuminator to be able to reach out and touch three, four, five, 600 yards with ease to be able to identify your targets. Now, what it is is a pretty sizable box on top of your gun, and that's just because I've kind of got used to the Somo Gear Ingall. Man, the Ingall is just, it's got such a tiny footprint, and we're gonna throw it up on the screen to actually show you the difference there. But after getting used to the Ingall, I was pretty disappointed whenever it did arrive, because it's, it's kind of a chonker, but do be informed, if you're using a 1.9 inch three riser, which I personally love, you do get clearance above this, even if you're actuating it with your thumb. Now, some technical jargon, we'll go over what we like, what we don't like, and then we're gonna go ahead and just get right to it and show you what it looks like and how it behaves under night. Now, we're just at sunset here out in deep east and we're making sure that we're gonna have a nice dark situation to be able to really showcase the difference between the LSM6, the Somo Gear, PEC 15, which we've already covered. Check out the detailed review in another video there. And then of course the Ingall, which again, we've also already covered. Now, just to go over some facts about it and what you need to be aware of. The first thing is it is a proprietary switch. The proprietary switch is all in the plug and they're not shipping with a right angle plug right now. So it is a straight plug, straight pin. The proprietary switch has two switch modes. You have a momentary on, you have an on off. It's quite large and you can't replace it with just a crane plug or a mod light switch like you would want to if you want to save on some rail space. On this gun, it's kind of okay. I can make deal with it. But if I went to something like this GHM9 SD, I don't have the rail space for a switch like that. So with this kind of gun, I would have to go with a mod button. Next thing I want to talk about in comparison as well is how are you going to go ahead and change your fire modes. On the very back of the device, you have a small dial. The dial will go all the way to the left for Viz Laser. Now it doesn't have a Viz Low, Viz High. In order to cycle through the modes, you're gonna turn the laser on and then you're gonna hit your momentary switch one, two, three times. On the third time, it will go into high power or low power depending on which mode you were in. Going from Viz, we give it one click. Now we're in the off mode. That's gonna conserve battery from any kind of phantom drain kind of worries you may have. One click over now, we're gonna to go to low illuminator. The next click is gonna be low laser. The next click over will be low combo, which is gonna be your illuminator and your laser in a combo. Now, when we're doing IR, your milliwatt rating is around three milliwatts, which is still pretty stinking bright. Going over though, once you remove your blue safety pin, you're gonna activate the high power mode. First one over is gonna be high illuminator, which is gonna be at a staggering 35 milliwatts of power. The next one over is gonna be high laser, which is again, going to be 35 milliwatts and then high combo. Now, after you're looking at this dial, the next or the dial next to it on the left side is gonna be your illuminator adjustment. This is going to allow us to go from either a flood to a spotlight. Now, when you're in the spotlight, it looks almost as tight as the laser itself. That really allows you to punch out and still get some kind of visible spread out to five, six, 700 yards. Now the range we're at tonight, we do have C-Zone style still all the way out to 270 or approximately 300 yards. So we've gone ahead and make sure our optics are zeroed. The laser is zero to the optics, so we know it's good. Now we did confirm with Viz laser earlier, so hopefully our IR is still slaved. It does have a guarantee of 0.7 MRAD at 30 yards for your co-alignment or your divergence, whatever you wanna call it between the two lasers. So that's pretty good as well. Now, one of the things that I wanted to really point out when we're talking about where is this fall into the market, because guys, the laser speed is not a cheap unit. In fact, you're gonna spend real world money on this thing at over 1,000 US dollars. And you're sending that to China and hoping that your product arrives. 
Well, the reason that it is so it's a high price unit is you just get a quality control unlike Somo gear that is actually rated for recoil and rifles. Not only is it rated for up to 308 recoil with no issues at all, you can put this thing under full auto fire, it's not gonna lose zero. And something that I learned really neat about this unit, the actual mount on it is a return to zero mount. So as soon as I take the unit off, do whatever I want with it, do my hand videos or shots or whatever I need to do, I put it back on the gun. Zero is returned without any issue at all. Pending, I did the exact same torquing, put it in the exact same pressure to the front, everything's the same, it returns to zero. That's a great feature. What I found out with the Somo Gear Ingall, which I know you guys said 40 inch pounds is a lot of torque to have to put onto a mount. And that's where I have to put mine to get it to get snug, hold zero and all that, but it does not return to zero. Taking it off and putting it back on, my zero had fluctuated pretty significantly. Take it back off, put it back on, it fluctuates again. So guys, there is no return to zero on that. This did have a good return to zero. The next thing you'll notice is that we've got MRAD adjustments, which are a quarter MRAD per click. It's a nice tactile click when you're doing your zeroing, but you only have turrets for your laser, and that's it. Your illuminator, which on some things like the PEC-15 here, you've got two sets of adjustment screws, and one of them is going to go ahead and dial in your illuminator so that you can center your laser. With this, because of the way that the lasers are designed in one little unit, you actually get a nice collimated look between your illuminator being there and your laser being center, regardless of how far out you are, how much you zero the laser, your illuminator is zeroing with your Viz laser and the IR laser. Really nice touch, because even the D balls, you still have to adjust your illuminator sometimes. So outside of that, there is one more trick it has up its sleeve, and that is IP68 rating. The IP68 rating really does mean something. Six is the standing for its ability to handle dust. That's the rating that it gets from the IP, because if you remember some things, uh, the, the Hollow Sun Iris coming out, it's IPX7 or IPX8, I believe, rated, which means that it's certified for water at whatever depth for whatever time period at the eight rating, but it has no ceiling or guarantee against dust, shock, and all that other stuff that comes with the impact rating when you get that first digit. That's why there's an X there. But with this, it's actually got a 68 rating or IP68, which means it's rated for everything you can throw at it because these were built to military specs for China and China was allowed to sell it to the US kind of under the radar maybe-ish. Remember guys, this is a gray area, but as a consumer, I do wanna inform you, it is not a violation for you to own a full power laser. It is only a violation for a commercial person to sell in the US directly to an individual. So that's why you can get full power lasers on the gray market because this thing is getting up to gray market pricing. You can get a full power PEC-15 that fell off the back of a military truck and it's probably cracked and got epoxy over it for around 1500 bucks, so not a whole lot more. Or you can get a Steiner D-Ball D2, which has the best illuminator in class for a civilian next to something like the Mall, but that's stupid money at 3,500. But you can get a D2 for around 1,200 to 1,500, depending on the day, depending on the sales, depending on used. Or you can get an A3 for around 13 to 1,700, but that has such a terrible illuminator and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. So guys, that is why I think this is worth the cost and why you might want to consider it. But don't take my word for it. Let's go ahead and wait for the sun to continue setting and let's go out and shoot. Hi, right. That was good. I could tell when you sent it. Yeah, yeah, same. I felt good on that one. There you go. That's great for night vision. All right, guys, so here we are. We've made it to sunset. Everything is getting dark. We've got a little bit of light left. So right now is the opportune time to go ahead and start looking at the armory of weapons, we'll call it, that we've gone ahead and brought out for you tonight. Now, the first thing that we wanna do is go ahead and give you the little refresher of what we're doing with the PEC-15. So we're just gonna go ahead and shine it. And the first thing that I want you guys to notice is, my goodness, that illuminator. It just doesn't, like, how did I recommend this thing so hard? After I got to better and better night vision, it just, I don't know guys, the laser is awesome and it's still awesome, but the illuminator is just, it leaves so much, so much desire. And I don't know, let's just see. Let's see if we can run the plates a little bit. And again, this is with our GHM-9 SD. So we're running 115 grain ammunition and because it is a ported barrel. These things will go subsonic. And uh, yeah, let's just see how zeroed this is. We're actually gonna go down 
to low because this is metal and kind of bright. That's safe? That's it. So, I mean, the PEC-15, guys, it's fun. I still recommend it, but the Illuminator just leaves a lot to be desired. But if we're getting close up, I think it's okay. Like, this is a C-Zone ID's target right in front of us, and we can see that from about 20 yards or so. I mean, it, it, it lights it up pretty well. So, I really don't have a lot to complain about. Man, but... But anyway, so guys, the PEC-15 still has a place in my heart, even though we've seen some issues. You know, we've talked about how to correct them with the base, uh, upgrading to an FMA, full stainless steel mount, did a good job of actually making it usable. But the Illuminator still leaves a lot to kind of be wanted. But moving on, we then find ourselves with the Somo Gear in Gaul. And don't worry, we're going to light them all up together just to take a look and see what they look like. But this is what we're dealing with when we got the in Gaul. Oh, after looking at the Somo Gear PEC-15, I still remember why I was so enamored with this thing when I first got it. Now, that's on high. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go three clicks over. Now, we're on low, which is still pretty stinking bright. Now, we're going to go ahead and try something here. Uh, this has got a 5200 zero, and we're going to go offhand under our armpit, and we're just going to see if we can connect with 270 yards. And we'll go ahead and go to high power now so we can get a nice tight view. And we're going to go ahead and kind of zoom in to punch. Now there is a nice little indicator light. So if we do get connection with it, we're going to see a nice feedback on it. Interesting. Let's take a look through our optic and see if we have a zeroing issue, guys. Would not... 100% surprise me. Okay, so we're able to hit it through the optic and absolutely, here we go again. The Ingall is not holding co-alignment. We tried it with the Zero with the Viz Laser just before we started filming and Viz Laser was right on the dot beautiful right now the laser is almost we're going to say six inches to a foot to the left of what we're seeing with the dot so i have fears that the ingall is not going to hold to a slave zero for you guys so bear that in mind tread with caution if you're going to purchase it it's hard to compare though the, the footprint of it is just so amazing but this is the star of the show tonight we are talking about the laser speed. This is the laser speed M6. And just just get ready for it. Because the second we turn this thing on, and we're gonna start on low, so we're gonna go one, two, three clicks over, and let's just light up the flag at 50 yards. Such a clean illuminator. We've got such a nice laser. We're gonna go ahead and punch all the way out now to 270 and we're gonna tighten the beam. And there's that C-zone still out there. Absolutely awesome. Coming in closer here at 100 and 125, back over here at 75, and these are known distances, guys. And then spread it back out. Now, watch, and we're gonna pump this thing up into high. <laughs> it still kicks me just how strong this thing is. This device on low is pretty much the Ingall on high. Now, the Ingall says it's less than 5 milliwatts, and they said it's still full power, and he's claiming it's actually 20, but, man, if this thing is 3 milliwatts on low, I think that Ingall actually is less than 5. But looking at this, this is 35 milliwatts of IR power, and hopefully it's clear on the video, but look how we can literally make this thing two lasers. And you see how it stays perfectly, I mean perfectly zeroed when we're punching out here. And you can clearly see all the way down to 270, 300 mark. So with that in mind, let's go ahead again. And now with what we know has been a great zero, oh, we are hot now. What we know is a great zero, 
let's go ahead and see again we're going to kind of just tuck it under our arm here we're going to aim out as far as possible and see offhand if we're able to go ahead and hit this target stand by So there it is, offhand from a laser that was zeroed with the Viz laser for 50 yards to give us a 5200, and we're hitting C-Zone still out to 270, almost 300 yards under night vision with just a laser under our armpit. You're not going to get that from the SOMO gear necessarily. I mean, you can if you re-zero with your IR, but guys, I, I just... I love this thing. This, this is absolutely a game changer for the Chinese market coming to the US, and I think your guys are gonna love it. Now, the one thing I didn't really talk a lot about, but the button placement on this is so far high and to the right, but honestly, if I'm not trying to be tactical and get a chin wheeled and everything else, I actually have a pretty good grip on it where it is. I, I'm not too concerned about that, but some folks might be. Another concern that folks might have is that they had a chance to do center bore access with the laser and they decided to just throw it completely off the side. And, you know, okay, you're gonna have to deal with converging zeros. You're gonna have to learn about whether you wanna do an infinite parallel or if you're gonna do uh, out to infinity with your red dot to co-witness or if you're just gonna do it at 100 and then get a zero there and do your calculations. Guys, we did a 5200 with our optic and then the laser we parallel zeroed out to infinity so we basically lined up to infinity as far as we could see and we lined up our visible green dot with our optic to get our zero and that's what we're slapping that still at but that was pretty fun so let's go ahead and do a couple more and see if we can just go ahead and connect at we'll do 75 100 then 125 so stand by and we're going to go ahead and brighten this up a little bit widen it rather I gotta slow down. There it is. It's not the laser. Woo, we blinded everybody. It's not the laser. It, it, that was me. a little bit, a little bit out of practice. But I was able to connect 75 pretty quick, right to 100 really quick, and then the 125 threw me for a little loop. But guys. The Zero just works, the laser just holds, it's powerful, it's bright. And right now, I don't know if you can see how dark it really is out here, guys, but we are almost pitch black here at this point. We've got moon coming, but because we've got a moonrise tonight, we're not going to see it for a little while. But yeah, now let's go ahead and see the fun part. Is it actually full auto capable? So let's change lowers, let's grab a fresh mag, and we'll get back to it. All right, guys, so we've gone ahead and changed out to an FA full auto lower. We're going to do a full send and see if the laser and illuminator both stay on. We're also going to see if the brightness, because we're going to do it at full power, if the brightness of the laser is going to reflect back on the smoke cloud and make the target invisible to us. So we're going to go ahead, slam it forward, go one, two, get back into that back position. And the gun's nice and toasty because uh, we just melted my pants a little bit. But let's go ahead and see... How we do? Stand by. So, didn't turn off. I'm still exactly where I want to be on target. And the smoke cloud, while it was present, the laser cut directly through it, didn't flash back too bad on my face, and I was still able to make confirmation of where I was shooting the entire time. Pretty happy about that. That was one thing I worried about. But now that we've done that and we've wasted a ton of ammo for you guys, let's go ahead and do the laser side-by-sides and wrap this thing up. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and give a demonstration of all four lasers now. Let's go ahead and start with the... Oh, <laughs> so bright. I've never been dark in the wall. This is the LSM6, and right now we are about as wide as it gets. And we can also get that all the way tight to punch it as a laser down there at 270. But we're gonna go ahead for this demonstration. We wanna be as wide as possible. The next one I'm gonna turn on is the Ingall, which one thing I hadn't really talked about yet, and I don't know if it's completely visible, but if you look up in the tree line, 
you're going to see that there's a halo around this. And that's just an artifact of the glass lens that's in front of it. I don't like that at all. I did notify Laser Speed's engineers. They told me to use the included cleaning kit and just clean it. I did that and here we are, still here. So we'll get that figured out at some point. Next, we've got the Somo Gear Ingall, which looking at them side by side right now, things that I note, the laser speed is brighter by a very big margin. But the Somo Gear Ingall is so much cleaner. And if you put them right on top of each other, Honestly, the Somo gear is actually a little bit wider on its widest diffusion. So we go narrow, that's as narrow as it gets, and then we're at the wide as it gets. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in the PEC 15 from Somo gear. That's on the GHM9 SD. By contrast, now we're looking, and this is as again, as wide as it gets. Be real careful not to shine the sky or shine people or whatever that might be up there. Uh, so again, that's as wide as the illuminator gets on the PEC 15. And you can see the only one that's actually centered inside the middle of the illuminator without even making any adjustments is the laser speed LSM6. The Ingall can be adjusted, the PEC 15 can be adjusted, but that's just something to point out. Now, with all these running, we're gonna go ahead and add in the official PEC 2A. And again, we see that it's not quite as bright. It's about as bright as the Ingall, not quite as bright as the LSM6 or the PEC-15, but of course the PEC-15's got a lot tighter diffusion. But one trick that the PEC-2A has in its benefit is watch how wide we can throw the illuminator on this thing. When we spread it all the way out, it just gives, now it is a dirty, you know, it's kind of dirty, but wow, look how much light we can just cast up close you still have the full power laser. It's just a nice, clean, full power system. So there is still something to be said with even these older PEC units that you just don't quite get when you're going to third party. But all in all guys, the laser speed LSM6, man, the more I use it, the more I still like it. Full auto rated, we've got IP68, full power goodness. It's still, if you're gonna spend the money, I think you cannot go wrong with the LSM6. So let's go ahead now and take a look at a commercial available laser just for comparison. And let's run the Streamlight TLR VIR2 to remind you what we get as consumers. All right guys, so this is your friendly reminder of what the government actually lets us have from the FDA standpoint. This is the Streamlight VIR2. Again, this one you can't turn off the laser light. It has to be laser and light only. You can't go light only, you can't go laser only, just laser light only. The laser is actually pretty powerful compared to what I remember, but it's really dark out. So I, I can't emphasize enough how dark it is tonight. Uh, but I got a laser beam out of this thing all the way out to 300, real easy visibility. But you can see that wide flood really only gets us the first 25 yards and then it just, everything beyond that gets dark. So we're gonna go ahead and send a couple down. We got a real rough zero on this earlier, uh, but we're gonna just see how this laser goes. Got that two for one there at the end, so that counts as the same hits. Let's go ahead and reset it again. <laughs> All right, so, Honestly, I still like the Streamlight TLR VIR2. It fits handy dandy into my uh, not recommended Hush holsters. Uh, full story on those guys coming out maybe soon. We'll talk about it. Never got to the review because the company kind of just AWOLed, took a bunch of people's money, and oh my God, I just got blinded by the cameraman. What is going on? Whoo! Uh, so yeah, we're not gonna talk too much about them. I don't wanna give them too much publicity, but guys, if you're in the market for a suppressor style holster, please avoid hush holsters. Don't think you're gonna get your product. It probably won't come in. Uh, but guys, that pretty much wraps it up. Again, we showed you a wide range of lasers all the way from the Somo gear stuff we've already covered. So you have that baseline of the PEC-15, the Ingall. We brought back out the 2A full power military unit just to make sure you saw what real US full power looks like and how great it can be if they would only sell it to us. And then we went ahead and brought out the laser speed LSM6 
and it just outshines the Somo gears on so many levels, guys. Yes, the Somo gear is cheap. Yes, it says airsoft rating, so who am I the fool to put it on real steel? I still think it's a good buy for someone who's just getting into night vision. Maybe you just got a, a pe uh, I almost said PEC 14. Maybe you just got a PVS 14 Gen 2 Plus tube, and you want to get something to get going, and your budget's real low. Guys, get a Somo gear. Who cares if you get called a homo gear for having it? It's okay. Somo gear holds up to recoil. Maybe the slave breaks on you. Maybe it doesn't. If it does, just zero the IR and enjoy it. Don't let anyone, you know, mess up your fun for using what you want to use or using what you can afford. But the most important thing is if you're saving money to get ammo and go train, you're still going to be better prepared than the guy that's going to drop the Gucci gear when he doesn't know how to use it and the end times come and he's just an epic loot drop for someone else. So don't be that guy. Get out and train like we're doing here tonight. It's been a fun time. We're happy we're able to bring this review to you guys. If you want to know more questions about the LSM6, ask away, ask over on the Instagram. Even feel free to reach out and message me on Instagram at GatCatTill, my Instagram shadow band, so it doesn't get a lot of love. But if you check it out over there, you can reach out with any questions. Oh, come on. No. You're way high. Oh, well, hi. Yep. Yeah, you just suck. I do. <laughs> yeah. Teach you to be better. <laughs>